Hey, hey, it's time to build a clone XR2206 function generator. It is a clone because they stopped producing those chips a long time ago when XR got gobbled up by another company. So, the first part will be a bit about the theory behind this thing and how they deviated the kit from the actual instructions on the data sheet. The second part starting at about then will be the actual build. That should be really short. There's not a lot of parts there. The third part at that time will be me testing this thing and seeing how it compares against my other function generator, which is vintage and uh, but not too bad. So I'll just move this out of the way and get to it. Okay, I've placed the block diagram up there and the recommended wiring by the original manufacturer, not this clone, but the original one. And it'll make a big difference uh, at a, that time. You can actually see it. So, just going around the chip, the first is just the ground. They're both hooked up the same way. I've uh, indicated uh, in black here, uh, circled with uh, dotted, um, what the recommended part is. Uh, output's the same for both of them on pin 2. Pin 3, there is a difference. Um, this is just amplitude control. And manufacturer said 50k, they put a 25k. A manufacturer said that this should be put in a cap. They didn't. They saved a bit of money. Down here, though, they actually put an extra 100 microfarads in, whereas the manufacturer only said one uh, microfarad. Then, this part here is for determining the frequency. Now, the manufacturer just put a capacitor in there, uh, so these are pretty well the same. Uh, they've got a different set of ranges in here. Yes, jumper, and it gives you the different frequency ranges. And the actual frequency is determined by the capacitance and the resistance. And the resistance, you see a diagram over there. These two basically um, determine, well, well determines a frequency. Uh, they're the same circuit. Uh, they are slightly different. Um, for the kit, they've got a coarse control and a fine control. Um, manufacturer's just got the one. And then over here, pin, pin 9, both of them don't have it connected. Uh, pin 10, uh, that's just for the internal voltage uh, reference, I believe. And uh, they put in a 10 microfarad. Manufacturer said 1 microfarad. Mm. For the square wave out on pin 11, uh, there's a difference is that manufacturer said use 10K, they used 1K. Didn't seem to make too much difference. And then there's the ground, ditto. They're the same. Then when you get up into here, they excluded this part completely. And, well, they've got this in here, but they just put a 330 ohm resistor uh, instead of a pot. And they've got the jumper. This is going to be important. Uh, if you jump to that time, uh, you'll see the difference in the waveform. I put uh, essentially this back in, and I put this back in. And as a spoiler, it uh, improved the shape of the sine wave significantly. So essentially it's uh, got a voltage uh, controlled oscillator, um, gain control, and then a block diagram for 
uh, shaping of the sine wave and the triangle wave. So the next is the assembly. So here's all the parts laid out. I've tested everything I can with the transistor tester slash test everything. Uh, all the components pretty well are bang on. Uh, so now it's time to put it together. I'm going to do this uh, stop motion uh, because you've seen my soldering if you've seen my other ones. So why torture you again? So first the resistors. So after the resistors come the capacitors. So the little capacitors are in. Next goes the electrolytics. So all the electrolytics are on. I'm going to put the sock socket on now. And I actually should have put this on before these caps since these are lower profile. So next comes the pins, the jumper pins. Okay, the jumper pins are on now, so it's now the time to put the power on. For this, I did actually have to turn the temperature up on my iron, uh, and I'll turn it back down a bit. And now it's time to put on the potentiometers. So now the pots are on, I've just got to put this connector on and stick the chip in. So everything's on except for the chip and the knobs. Uh, the next thing I'll do is I'll flip this over around like this and I'll carefully just clean this up with some isopropanol. So now it's a lot cleaner than it was before. I'll stick the chip in and stick it in its case. And now it's all assembled. So how do I get power in here? Hmm. Well, I reach over to my little bin of parts. I cut off other parts and I pulled this one out, which is the proper fit. So I've got to wire that up to get it to go to my power supply now. Okay, it's now time to do some testing. i am uh, got on the yellow channel my 35-year-old function generator. It is flaky. It's working right now, luckily. And on the blue channel, I've got the XR2206. So, I'm running at about 1.4 kilohertz. And let me just zoom in. Uh, it's actually not too bad of a waveform. I'm probably off on the frequency a tiny bit. Uh, but you can actually see where on the yellow one, it's a, a bit more of a sine wave. And the blue, which is the XR2206, is more like a triangle wave. Now, this is probably because they're not using pins 13, 14 with the resistor and 15, 16 with the other uh, potentiometer. And hence... They're not uh, cleaning up the waveform, which those uh, two sets of pins uh, are supposed to do. So I'll try this on a different frequency now. Okay, at 14.8 uh, kilohertz, same thing. It's not quite sinish. Uh, I'm probably off a tiniest bit on the frequency again. Let's see what it does at a bit higher. And at 152K-ish, it's actually looking a bit better. So I'll try a bit higher frequency. Or uh, my function generator is looking a little bit worse. And at about 1 meg, actually, uh, they're not that bad. And at 10 hertz, you can actually definitely see the difference. So it looks like at the higher frequency, they kind of uh, get better. Uh, for the XR2206, uh, but at the low frequency, there's more distortion on the sine wave. And the triangle wave looks pretty well bang on at uh, 10 hertz. 
and at one meg the XR2206 uh, triangle wave looks more like a sine wave. And this here is the square wave output of the XR2206 at, uh, I believe it's one meg. Yep, one meg ish. So that's pretty lousy. So as I adjust the frequency down, you can see it's slowly getting better and better, um, shaping like a square wave. And I got to move a jumper. And as I continue to lower the frequency, it's looking more like a square wave. So it's actually not too bad there. Oops. Push the button harder. And let's see what the edge looks like. So that's actually not too bad looking. Yeah. Uh, I really kind of suspect uh, if you add the two extra components, uh, it might clean it up some. But you do have to remember, this is a clone, and uh, the clone may not be uh, a perfect reproduction. And isn't it amazing? If you add those two potentiometers, as with the... Uh, XR recommended. It's almost a perfect sine wave. This is at uh, 10 hertz. I've added, I'll move it into the there and I'll shrink it out. I've added in uh, the RA uh, um, potentiometer and the RB potentiometer and Presto! All I did adjust, I sent them both to the center position, and then I had to set the 500 ohm uh, potentiometer a tiny bit, and the waveform cleaned up beautifully. So, that's at 10 hertz, and I'll adjust it to a different uh, frequency. And at 1 megahertz, it's actually not a bad waveform. So, motto of the story, maybe follow what the original people actually did and use all the parts. Have a good day. Bye.